Okay guys, rolling the wrists in one direction and then changing direction. Just watching me for the cues with changing direction. The reason it's important for us to do upper body weight bearing and impact work, well, it's exactly the same reason it's important for us to be weight bearing through the skeleton for our lower body, because we want to stimulate the bones in our upper body as well as lower body, into flattening the hands and then curling them in. But what I would say to you is that if you have osteoarthritis, still take part, just go easy. So pick the lighter modifications, listen to the cues, interwaving. I hope you enjoy the session, let's go. Okay, so you're either gonna find yourself on the floor, on your hands and knees, or leaning against the wall. And I just want you to walk around the floor or the wall. How far you are from the wall will just determine the amount of pressure that you've got on your wrist. So the further you are from the wall, the more pressure. Um, come up onto your fingertips now and see if you can walk around on those fingertips. So if you're on the floor, um, same thing, you lean forward a little bit more. Now we're gonna go onto our fists. So start walking around on the fists. This might not be comfortable for everyone. So decide if it's comfortable for you. And you can retreat to one of the previous versions if you prefer. And just a reminder to always change the amount of pressure that you are applying if you want to. And now we're gonna change up from flat hand to fists, to fingertips just making it really varied. For some of you, this might be an exercise round or it might be a warm up round. We're gonna stop there and have a little rest. Your rest might involve some shoulder moves, some neck movements, be quite random, just whatever you need to loosen up and just relax so that you can get ready for your next round, rolling the wrists and a little bit of finger movement as well. The next round is going to be a light load round, so position yourself fairly close to the wall, hands at shoulder height, just going to let yourself drop to the wall lightly. So we're also working on reaction time here, not just impact. And then just to make the journey a little bit more challenging, it's actually going to take much longer for those hands to get up to the wall. So therefore, it's going to be a lot bigger impact if the hands are next to your sides to start with. You can also challenge yourself to turn your head to the side as you catch yourself at the wall. And then give a, have a go at um, taking those hands back behind you now. So sweeping them behind you so it's an even longer journey for the hands to get to the wall. So once again, we are practicing with reaction time as well as impact here. And just remember, you can walk yourself even closer to the wall if you feel that you need to work at an even lighter load. From here, your options are to stay and repeat that round close to the wall or step a little bit further back. If you step further back, what that means is you are going to be increasing the impact that your wrists are going to be bearing and decide whether it's right for you or just stick with those light level rounds. And remember to change from having the hands at shoulder level, having the hands by your side and sweeping the hands back behind you. Make sure you feel safe. This is also a confidence booster or a confidence knocker. So I would always advise that you make sure that you feel safe and comfortable with that falling action. Remember that you'll need to find which distance is the best distance for you and also decide whether you walk yourself in once you've landed your hands on the wall and then step back or whether you have the ability to push yourself back. It really does depend on your chest strength. And then we've got some final rounds of marching on the wall, flat hands, fingertips, knuckles, make sure you mix it up until we finish this round with shoulder rolls, neck movements and some wrist rolls as well.
Okay, for those of you coming to the floor, take a pause and bring yourself down onto all fours with a chair in front of you. From here, what I'd like to ask you to do is come up onto your fingertips and then flatten your hands. So the difference between the work we've been doing on the wall is we've got downward gravity. So it's a little bit more mimicking of a simulation of a fall. Going as light or as heavy as suits you. Come up onto the chair now and have a go at falling down towards the floor. You can increase the intensity by taking your knees further away from the chair. Then start a floor march with your hands. We'll head back up to the chair now and this time choosing to jump down and jump up onto the chair. If you feel comfortable to, you can come onto fists, hands and fingertips now. The next round is a high impact round, slamming hard down to the floor. Only choose to take part in this if it suits you. It's a heavy, stomping land. Take some wrist rolls to finish and then take hold of the top set of knuckles and pull back the wrist so that you're stretching into the forearm. Do that on each side to finish. You can contact me through my social media channels and my website if you're interested in taking part in group, live, online weekly sessions with individual feedback targeted at maintaining bone strength, preventing falls and staying stronger for longer. Like this video if it's been helpful for you, subscribe for more tips and share it with someone you think that might find it useful.